All right, welcome back to the FLA podcast. And today we're going to be talking all about how to get your real estate license, the motives for getting into real estate, and then how to make money when you have your real estate license. So it's going to be really interesting for people out there who's looking to build a business, build some passive income in real estate. Uh, we have somebody here who is a, a true leader, uh, you know, a really great guy. And I've you know, had the privilege of being uh, being his business partner and meeting him. Really got to know this gentleman, uh, you know, a lot. And uh, I really respect what he's doing in the real estate space and what he's done in the past as well. So uh, this is Ray Dockery. This is our guest today. He is a Army veteran. So Ray, thank you for your service. And he has a lot of experience, <laughs> a lot of experience in uh, building teams in the past. And that's uh, going to be a big focus of today's podcast as well. So Ray, welcome to the show. How's it going? Good, Colby. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Like I said, um, I really respect what you've done uh, in the past with building your teams uh, in different corporate spaces and with different businesses as well. And I'm, I really respect what you're doing currently right now with the uh, the group that you're building and then yeah. the community that you're creating as well, which we're definitely going to dig into today. Getting out of the service, um, going into corporate America. Um, you know, during all those times, you know, I was building teams and leading people. And um, I would say probably a year and a half ago, you know, I left corporate America, decided like to kind of just kind of sit back and, and reflect on my life. Um, you know, I am retired army, my wife, she has her own practice. And I've, you know, I've been blessed and been able to just stay home and reflect over these years, over this almost, you know, a year and a half now. So I was, I always wanted to get my real estate license. So I've been working on it while I've been having this downtime, um, being able to spend like more time with my family. Um, Cause I've been ripping and running, you know, four tours in Iraq. And when I got out um, the service, I was just pretty much like work was everything. Like I just had to make sure that everybody was good, bills taken care of. And now we're at a place now where things are kind of settling down and, you know, you kind of, I would say the pandemic too had a lot to do with that as well. Like people had a lot of time to reflect um, what was important. And I just, you know, being able to be home and seeing like, you know, the things that my wife was doing and I kind of took on those roles a lot more um, and then helped her start her, she started her own practice. So now I've just been kind of, you know, I don't know. I see things a lot differently than I used to. Um, I've always been team oriented and driven and piece of teams. So now that I'm in real estate, it's like, where do I kind of fit in with this? And, you know, coming into EXP, like it molded with me very well. Um, the way that it's, it's organized and designed, like it fits um, the need for me to actually have to, you know, want to be able to build a team. So that's what I'm like, my mission is now and what I've been doing. Just a little bit. So you've kind of always, you mentioned that you always kind of like want to be team oriented and yeah. you love leading teams and you had that experience as well. So you don't necessarily think of that like in conjunction with real estate, if you know what I mean. Like, I mean, we currently, you know, we operate in a system where, you know, when you're in the, when you're in the industry, you kind of realize there's a lot of teams you know, different types of teams in real estate production teams, the revenue share team that we're kind of working towards and building as well. But I guess my question is like, why, why did you choose real estate? Like what, what kind of prompted you to move into this specific industry? Cause there's a lot of industries you can lead and build teams in, but the, why did you choose this specific industry? Um, so having like investment properties is something that I always done um, in 2000 and I want to say it was 2008. I was like a real estate assistant. I was helping another lady. Um, so I've always been interested in it. Um, one thing for me, like when it comes to real estate is like, I always want to learn the loopholes of what's going on in the background, right? The things that we don't know, like, so we're homeowners and we're paying our mortgage and everything, but there's so much going on behind the scenes that we have no idea about. Um, you have, you know, normal people just like me and you that's going out buying million, million dollar buildings and you're wondering like how are they doing this like is their family rich do they have money but there's a bunch of things um and tools that are there to help everybody we just don't know about them so for me it was about learning that and being able to pass that stuff down to my kids 
um, is really one of the reasons like I really want to get into it. So really to like to learn the loopholes and to be honest with you, learn the loopholes and, and figure out how to be able to move in this industry because there's there's so many ways to get things done and the normal Joe don't know about it. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why a lot of people enjoy getting their real estate license or want to get their real estate license is because they want, they understand wealth is built through real estate, but they don't really understand, like you said, the loopholes or what, what goes on behind the scenes of how are right. these people buying so many, you know, so many properties, right? So right. Um, kind of go over that a little bit, because I know you're working with a lot of people here, helping them get their license and get their feet wet in the, uh, in the real estate industry. So if you wanted to become a real estate agent, how would you start that process, right? For our listeners who are, uh, who are new. I'm um, getting your pre-license certificate will be the first step. And then you're going to study for the, the state exam and pass the state exam. Um, so one thing, I mean, as you probably know, we've kind of went like, so after we got our license, our group kind of went back to the CE shop and now we're helping other students because there wasn't a, um, it wasn't really a support system there, right? Um, going back, trying to help people to get their license. So we have study groups um, every Sunday and Monday, and we have one-on-one. So we probably spend probably about 19 hours a week, um, the students, um, especially in the CE shop. Like there, I'm sure there's other pre-licensed schools that we can work with, but right now that's kind of our, um, our audience right now that's in front of us. So. Um, that's who we're currently working with. It's probably with the CE shop. I would say probably you have 100 people that pay for the course. And I would say probably 50 people actually finish it. Oh. Um, so you're looking at 50% of people that kind of walk away from not even completing the course um, just because maybe it's being overwhelmed. Um, and to be honest with you, like going through the course, you're, you're there and you're like taking notes on everything that you, you know, everything, like every page, every section, like you're taking all these notes, you got like 12 notebooks. And um, we just found an easier way to get through the course, um, have your notes where it's more organized. And it's probably taking people on average, like 30 days, rather than taking them six months or to a year, because they give you a year to finish the course. Um, so yeah, just being able to close the gap right now when it comes to people not feeling overwhelmed or have that anxiety and they have like, I think right now in one of our just group messengers, we have like 50 people in there. So they're just like texting each other and motivating each other and asking questions if they're getting stuck on something. Um, we're making sure that we're covering like um, pretty much like how to, I guess I won't give too many golden nuggets away but like how to how to get through the course quickly right and be able to use those resources to study for the final and study for the state exam right so it's all kind of laid out for you where you don't have to have so much anxiety and, and fear about taking the course because it's, it's really not that bad yeah right so one of the things that i know you talk a lot about is how to make money in real estate with your license because a lot of people don't understand there's more than one way to, to make money uh, yeah. aside from just selling houses. Right. I think that um, for me, when I, when I was getting into, before I got into real estate, you know, I really did some research about how many people actually get into it, how many people leave, like the numbers are astounding, right? So you're talking about five years. Um, after five years, you're you're looking at what almost sixty something percent of people leave um, the real estate industry. So the number is it's really, really high, right? Of people who really don't stay in. And um, to me, as an entrepreneur, like I've been an entrepreneur for since I was like thirteen years old. So for me, I'm like, how do I look at real estate, right? One, remember we talked earlier about all the loopholes and the things that I don't know and the things that my family don't know and the people that I know, they don't know these things, right? So one, just getting that knowledge to me is, is worth everything, right? To be able to pass yeah. anything down to anybody um, that can help them and their kids, right? Um, so for me, I was looking at 
all the different angles from an entrepreneur standpoint of how I can make money by one being licensed and two being in a network of other real estate agents. Right. Um, so I came up with, you know, like now, like, is there's other services that I provide, right? So one of them being aerial photography, right? Mm -hmm. So we do drone photography at people's listings and I have a person that does the video editing and make a commercial out of it, right? So they'd be able to use that on social media. Um, logos. So any marketing materials that's needed, I have a team that does that as well. Um, we have like landscaping that's needed. So pretty much like, I guess where I'm going with this is that if I'm an agent, right, and I have this house and this house just is, is now being put on the market, tenants just came out of that home, like they need to turn that home back around to get that house showable, right? To be able to sell it. So what we're doing is providing those service to be able to go into that house, do the clean out, do the junk removal, do any painting that's needed, do any carpet cleaning, do any landscaping, right? It's almost like now, then when I got to EXP, probably like a month in, I heard about Curbio, right? So Curbio is a, is the same kind of structure. Um, I guess for me, I'm just doing it more on a local level, right? And just teaching other people on my team to be thinking outside the box, right? You have things like KV Core that we use our CRM system. So we have somebody on a team that's becoming an expert in KV Core. Like that is a skill set that can be used because people that do come in, rather they're experienced agents or not, don't want to deal with KV Core, right? They're learning a new CRM when they could just pay somebody to upload all their workflows and everything in there, you know, you already have, and I already seen people are already in the business now, they're already charging people to do KV core. Right. So to me, it's like always thinking outside the box of what other, what agents, right. That are actually killing it right now. What do they need? What kind of support do they need? Um, and really that's what, that's all we've been doing. So you have, since I'm already thinking outside the box and I have a team and we're, they're thinking outside the box. So they'll bring new ideas to the table. Um, and that's, that's what we've, we've been doing lately. Yeah. I think that's awesome, man. It's Cause there's, I mean, a lot of people think about real estate in kind of like a one track mind. Mm -hmm. They think you can go out there, get your license. And then the first thing they say is like, go to your sphere of influence, see who wants to sell or buy a house. Well, yeah, some people might not have that luxury, of, you know, of doing that. I mean, I was kind of in that same place as well when I first started Right. and telling me to hit my sphere up. I'm like, well, my sphere is, you know, cause I started when I was 18. So my, my sphere is, you know, freaking 18 right. year old in college. Like who's going to buy a house then? Uh, but I mean, there's, there's ways to, to work around that, but I love how, you know, you kind of make it so that everybody kind of in your team and working with you can, you know, play to their strength and then also work in the real estate industry and then see where that, that niche that they have kind of takes them uh, right. when it comes to, you know, doing, you know, like you said, doing KV core for other agents, right? There's plenty of people doing that, but there's not a lot of people teaching it, right? There's not a lot of people teaching the service side of real estate. Uh, but you guys are doing that because, uh, because I mean, obviously it just, it just helps more people. And I think when you're getting into the industry early on, it's, it's very difficult for, um, uh, for you to kind of just go out there and, and try to emulate a top agent because, you know, they could be working very hard and not having the best lifestyle. But I think the way that yeah. you're building it is, you know, it's, it's more lifestyle oriented. And I think uh, newer agents can come in and actually do the thing that they wanted to do, which is, you know, build some wealth and, you know, have a little fun in, in the real estate business. Right. So why are you, why are you kind of on that? So um, we have this thing, like we're, we're trying to groom, it's like an ecosystem. Right. Yeah. And like I said, when we all come together, if we're all focusing just being buyer agent or seller agent and we're knocking on doors and we're call calling and we're we're, you know, doing squeeze pages and paying for leads and we're just we're doing things every day and we're trying to get that buyer seller, buyer seller, right? And we have a month, we don't sell a home. We have a two months, we don't sell a home. You know, so what are we doing during that time frame? instead of us just spinning our wheels, you know, doing that every day. Yeah. So what we've done is like, we've, we figured out ways that I can have a, a hot streak, right. And I can have 
four or five closings a month, right? Um, one thing that I've seen um, while I've been in the industry, like I, I guess I label them people or people as sharks per se, right? And you have it where you have a hundred agents and we're all cheering on the guy or the two, the two, the guy and the gal, right? The two that have closed all of the closings, right? They had all the closings. So them, those two agents out of the hundred agents have made $1.2 million in 30 days, right? And we do like a round of applause and everybody's happy. Um, me personally, like, and especially if those people do have a downline, right? Um, me personally, I would feel embarrassed, right? To be able to come in front of the team inside of like a, let's just say if this was a conference call and you gave me a, a shout out and say, you know, Ray, you, you know, you did great. You closed 1.2 million, but I have 30 people on my downline and um, nobody closed anything, right? Like to me, that would embarrass right. me, but this is a norm, right? And we all know this is a normal thing. Like we don't think twice about it. Ray killed it. You guys suck, you know, and we kind of move on to the next month. Um, that part about the, the industry, it bothers me, right? So um, what we're trying to do now is create an ecosystem. If I have a hot streak like that um, and I have people that are on my downline that are not in any phase of closing or have any deal, like we're coming together and we're working on the deals. Like they're working on the right. transaction part of it. There's always something to be done to help me to be able to move on and do something else. So I'm able to share um, the load and some of the money right to the downline. Um, and it's what we're kind of creating is an ecosystem uh, when it comes to that. So um, when it comes to the services itself, it's the same thing, right? If we're talking about web design and marketing materials and stuff like that, if they are bringing people into our um, circle to be able to, that needs those services, those people in our, on our team are able to, to, to gain like a referral fee, right? So it's not always just, how can I put this? It's not just money being made by one individual. Like there's all of us working together to like put all this food on the plate and we're all eating from it, I guess you would say. Um, so that's really been the, the focus now. And let's say, for instance, you know, you were on a team and you went out and you paid, I don't know, a thousand dollars or whatever you pay for this lead generation system. Right. So, no, we're actually dealing with that now. Right. And it's me in that situation. But um, I'm able to have people that are not having deals right now or things are not going on for them to be making calls and set appointments for me, right? Because it's in the state of Delaware, they could be in another state and we have our internal referrals, right? So there's, there's ways to be able to work around the fact that one agent is, is for some reason, all of a sudden they heat it up and they have like all of these, um, these deals while everybody else, they're doing the right thing every day, but it's just not their time. Right. So how do we like create this this structure where, OK, hey, you're going to help a um, you're going to help Amber today. You're going to you're going to work on these transactions with her and this person is going to do this. Right. It's not saying that that person is going to get 50 percent of their commission. I wouldn't expect anybody to do that. Right. But transaction brokers are making like two hundred and fifty dollars per transaction, five hundred dollars per transact transaction. And if we have six or seven transactions in a month, I mean, that can put food on somebody's table that can pay somebody's rent, right? So it would not benefit me. Or like I said, I'll feel embarrassed if I made $1.2 million in 30 days and I know somebody who's about to be evicted out of their home. It just makes no sense to me. So that's what we're creating. We're creating the ecosystem that way when it grows bigger and bigger, it's automatic. Like people already know the fee structure. People already know, hey, um, you know, we got 20 of us up here. We have 70 um, transactions or closings this month. We have 30 new agents that just came in. So we're going to bring those agents up here. We're going to have them tackle this because they're learning hands on at this time now. So that's kind of what we're trying to create right now. Um, I think I answered your question, but probably yeah. in a long way. <laughs> No, I love it, man. Cause, um, 
because I mean, like real estate, you think about it, like, especially on the realtor side and I mean, even on the, like just investor side as well, it's very kind of like a individual business. There's no, yeah. and there's really no way for people to work together uh, in a sense, right? Like you're, you're the listing agent, right? You're, you're the buyer's agent. You can't, I mean, there's co-listings that you can do with, with other people. I guess that's, that's a way to do it, but yeah. it's, it's really individual business unless you start building those production teams, right? Where you're taking about 25 to 50%, like you said, of an agent's commission right. just for providing them, you know, let's just be honest here, like very minimal support and right. very crappy leads uh, essentially. So, um, you know, I've yet to seen a team leader, you know, provide this, you know, production team leader, provide the support that, you know, an agent really needs uh, for 25 to 50% of their commission. So, you know, I, that's just what I've seen. Maybe, you know, you've seen something different. Uh, well, out there, I, gonna, right? I don't know. Yeah. I was going to say like, you know, we don't, we don't want to start an award or anything. So yeah. I, you know, when it comes to that, when people have production teams, you know, if that's, that's, that's great that they're able to do that. Um, for me looking at it, um, we're kind of doing the same thing in a way, right? Um, but we're not, let's say if I was on a team, right? I went to a production team and they have me doing whatever they have me doing on the team, right? So I'm getting paid whatever per transaction. But if I go out on my own today and I find three deals, I still got to pay that team leader that money, right? And for me, that's, I, I don't think that, you know, that's fair. Right. So right. what we're trying to create within the ecosystem is basically like saying, if you don't have nothing going on, come to the table. Right. Come to the table. Let's see what we have for you to do. And if you are next month, you got three or four deals. That's awesome. You know, there's nothing I'm taking from that. Right. So it's all about just like helping people that are not they're not having a good month, right? Or they're not having a good year, <laughs> right? So yeah. just being able to create that ecosystem where we're not like leaving people behind and I'm not, I'm definitely not gonna be that guy that's sitting here um, excited that I did $1.2 million in 30 days and um, my team didn't eat it all. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great attitude to have. And I think, I think uh, most people, they don't think like that in the industries because it doesn't allow them to, um, because whatever the structure is of it, like, I guess, you know, we're just talking about a production team, you know, they're, they're really kind of trying to benefit themselves. They need to take, they need to take agents commissions in order to, you know, have residual income coming in month after month. Um, so that's the way they have to structure it. So maybe you can touch on like the reasoning behind how you're able to do this uh, with the EXP structure kind of backing you and how this revenue share, this revenue share model works where you're able to, you know, not, not even just like not compete with your team, but actually give them more than, you know, you give yourself because you're all winning at the end. Right. Um, I would say like, so it, in a traditional brokerage, right, you have it. And this is just my opinion, right? I'm, you know, don't shoot, don't shoot the messenger. Like, so you come in, um, into the industry and you're the new person, right? One, you're a new agent, right? About to eat, eat up more market share. Somebody's got to waste their time training you and getting you up to speed, right? You're just more of a, like, uh, a thorn in the side, I guess you would say. And I feel that with EXP, right? Because of the way that our rev, our rev share works, like we're able, you're able to come into a system that people are going to try to help you because people are benefiting from your success. Right. Right. And I, I think because you kind of like switch that you do, you did like a paradigm shift and you kind of switch the way it's structured um, that now you're it's, it's more beneficial for the people that are around you instead of looking at you as like, Oh man, a damn new guy is going to come in here and he's, He's going to eat up the market share. I'm wasting my time with him. I could be out here doing X, Y, Z. You have more people like, hey, let's get right going. What do you need? You know, those things. So for me, um, looking at the EXP model in the rev share, it's like, it's like a no brainer to me, man. The way that it, you know, it's so, there's so many things that we could talk about when it comes to rev share. 
but just from that aspect alone that you're not walking into a situation where people are looking at you like competition rather than if you for instance if you were to help me that eventually it will benefit you right if you were to help me to become uh, a real estate mogul or whatever the case may be right and i'm out here killing it and i'm 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 building a team like those people that are in my upline are going to benefit from that right so when i come to the table and say hey kobe hey um you know whoever i need i need um help with this or I have somebody on my team that doesn't have the experience in this can you help them like they're going to come to the table and, and, and make it make it happen yeah definitely i've you know hopefully i've done a good job for you so far right <laughs> yeah you've done a great job yeah great thanks job. thanks uh but uh but no like I love that you said that because it, it's providing the opportunity for somebody who's brand new to the industry, like yourself and like me as well, two years back, I, I came in with no experience. And then like, look at you a month in, you're already starting your team. You already have an agent on your team. So you've already stepped into a team leader position without having to go through the, you know, the beginner stages, right? Like, you know, without having to do the trials, if, if you will, right? Like you right. Know, go through the trials of, you know, putting in the, putting in like the, the, the work beforehand, but not, not that saying you didn't put in the work, but like, you didn't have to do the thing where you have to do the open houses and you had to, you know, work with the crappy buyers and, and cold call, you know, a hundred people a day, you've already stepped into this position because, you know, because you have the experience of being a leader. So we just essentially provided you the opportunity uh, from a company standpoint to step in with that role and right. with the experience and then build the same thing you've built in the past and even above and beyond that uh just now in a different industry yep. right correct okay so i mean obviously you know the the exp model has kind of helped you kind of get started really quickly as a leader but you know with the time that you've been with the company you know what's what's like what's your honest review about it because i mean there's a lot of good stuff being set out there uh by people in the company uh, because obviously we're, we're all benefiting if, you know, you are joining, but, uh, yeah. you know, I don't think we've gotten enough honest reviews where, you know, what are some of the pitfalls, right? If a new agent's kind of looking at the company, what would you warn them uh, about if, if they were coming in, uh, coming in? Um, all right. So I would say probably, right. Don't get caught into the bait and switch kind of thing. Right. Cause you know, the, the model itself, right, from what, you know, what EXP offers, it's a no brainer, right? But you can get into a position where you are joining a team that has no direction, okay? Right. Um, no direction at all, like, and I've, I've talked to other people, um, you know, being able to come into EXP and then they, the person that who brought him in, they ghosted him, never heard from him again. Um, they're probably they're they're running around kind of an EXP world trying to figure out where to go next. Um, so definitely like because of how the company is structured, um, you definitely want to be able to get with a team that is going to take care of you because you can get with somebody that pretty much just bring you onto the company and just kind of like they leave, right? Because with EXP, when you sponsor somebody, regardless of where they go, they're still connected to you, right? So unless you're going to leave EXP and then come back in six months <clears throat> is, the only, <clears throat> is the only way that you can actually reset that. So who's going to do that? Nobody's going to do that, right? It's going to be like, okay, the sponsor sucks and I'm just going to move on. Uh, no, I think it's a good point because... People don't really think about when they're joining the company, who to join with. Um, we've seen just in the kind of like the past couple, couple of months, really, a lot of people are joining the company as quote unquote orphan agents, right? So they like the EXP model. We're now, we're, we're big enough where new agents are recognizing the brand. They recognize right. the name. They understand the model just from all the information that's out there, but they, they don't really have somebody to join with, right? They don't, they don't have a, a, an agent in mind to name as their sponsor, and they just join with either a random person in their, you know, in their local market. We've seen a lot of that happen, or they join with like a cousin who's also with EXP that they barely really, uh, barely really know, 
or right, they just right. join a they join with you know as an orphan agent which like they don't name a sponsor which is probably the worst thing uh you know especially for a new agent that, that you could do is just join exp without a sponsor because you're really going to be kind of left on your own there right but, um i love that you said that because like you you do need to be careful like who you choose as your sponsor because you can't change them unless you leave the company and come back so you could be you know you could be really in love with the model but it, it's hard to kind of work on your you know work on your business because you're not with the right person or you're not with anybody at all and you don't get any support uh coming in as well and i think that's why uh why a lot of people leave exp is they end up choosing the wrong sponsor or not choosing a sponsor at all and then they end up with in a position where there's nobody to kind of help them so right um i mean that that's kind of like what you were saying too as well right yeah exactly exactly yeah if you if you come into exp i think that's the downside right we're we're cloud brokerage right so you have to definitely be around people that's going to help um you're not going to be able to like you know run to a building which we do have the cloud i mean you you can get anything answered within minutes is one thing i could say so now but the thing is that you don't know what to ask right, right. you have no idea where to start and all these things so um you'll figure it out you'll definitely be able to be able to go into the to the um cloud into exp world <clears throat> exp world and be able to figure out where to go but it's just going to be it's going to be a hassle um you're not going to have the support there that you should so i definitely wouldn't go rogue and just join and and not have some like a team to, to support you you know right. yeah so me person me personally I, I like to work with underdogs right and what i've noticed um as i told you before i don't think i even brought this up yet um one thing that i've seen is there there's not a lot of support right so if you go to the CE shop, right? Um, of course, they have a group. There's a bunch of people in there, no guidance. Um, there's no support there, right? And I've I've had these conversations, and I'm not going to mention names, right? Basically saying that you don't have too many people that are licensed that are going back to help people that are trying to get their license. They're like, well, I got my license. See you guys. You know, good luck. Adios. Right. There's nobody really coming back to those people and saying, you know, how can I help you? Like, this is what I did to get through the course or or whatever. Right. Because I've been told that, hey, if they don't have the resilience to be able to get through this themselves, then they don't deserve to be in the real estate industry. Right. And I was just like, wow, damn, that is that is dark. Right. To just be able to say that. Um, so for me, you know, I was I went back immediately, right? And I think that I was already I was already talking to people and leading people as I was going through the course. I had people I helped finish the course before me, right? So I I was already doing it anyway. Um, and to see that it there was no guidance and there was no support or structure in there is like we kind of just it just kind of organically just built. So now it was just me and now it's three other. Um, people on my team that are actually doing the same thing, right? So now, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, just kind of working with the underdogs is really what I do. Like I'm the people that nobody wanted to help, right? Even when it comes to EXP at the end of the day, I don't really think that people really go after new agents, right? Because from a RevShare standpoint, the the new agent has to get up and running and they got to get trained right and they got to have all these things going on so it's like the energy that has to be spent with a new agent is more than just going after somebody that's already in keller williams killing it right you're going to bring them over as producing agents and immediately you guys are just going to start printing money right so again when you look at a new agent and how long they actually last in the industry one they get starved out right they're getting starved out because they're getting no deals and then they have no direction they have no team they have no structure like all those things are missing so i know we haven't plugged in the uh, realtor network army yet but realtor network army <laughs> is really what that's about right we're just trying to create the structure especially for new agents are that are coming in 
um, and creating an ecosystem where people are not really like starved out. Like we can survive if, if we have people in here that are already heated up and we are, um, we're, we're all putting our energy into one thing, right? So when it comes to the Realtor Network Army and the social media accounts that we have, like we're all posting there, right? So if I have a listing, I'm posting that listing, even though I have my personal um, real estate page, right? We're all pushing that energy into one place. Um, and if, for instance, like you're in Minnesota and you're on my team and you have this, you bought this lead generation system and you have all these leads coming in, like we're gonna come in and help you, right? We're gonna come in and help you set your appointments, make sure you have time to get in front of these people and try to build that for you, right? So it's just us coming together and not being like separated and being individuals yeah. and being sharks in the water um, that you normally would see. <laughs> That's not funny, right? Right. Yeah. Shark in the water. <laughs> shark in the water. Yeah. Shark in the I water. Mean... There's some sharks out there, man. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, especially now with like the market turning a little bit, agents are getting real desperate. Um, <laughs> yeah, agents are getting really desperate. Agents are bad. are kind of out. Right. Yeah. I mean, like they it, it understand, like they're you know yeah. they're they're afraid they're lo of losing their you know their business of of you know losing their revenue, their income. Right. Uh, but you know, there's a the way that you've kind of created your team and the ecosystem that you have. There's really no need to do that because everybody can win. Uh, at the end of the day, because, you know, basically in a, in a rule of business is you're, you're lowering expenses, right? And then with what we're doing now, there's a lot lower expenses than what a traditional business would do. Right. So it allows us to share revenue back to everybody as long as, you know, you know, obviously, right, as long as they're contributing something right. uh, to the process. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. So that's pretty much like, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a good point because it's pretty much the same thing that we're trying to do within the ecosystem as well. So right. it's like continuing already the, the EXP model, but just like going deeper into it, right? Just right. Not, not getting to a point where we are, like you said, like the, the market is changing and I already seen this already. Like I already, I already plan to be stabbed in the back like 26 times, right? <laughs> this year. Right. So you just have to be like, um, I don't take it personal. I understand that people have a family to feed and all these things. Um, and like I said earlier, I've, I've been blessed to been be able to like, if I don't have deals this month, if I don't have deals in the next six months, like I'm focused on other things, like I'm not that super worried about it. Um, and it also gives that that time and energy to be able to keep building the ecosystem and nurturing it. And if I'm having these, you know, deals on the table, I'm, I'm, I'm actually able to give them more away, you know, in a way that I'm having people help. They are learning the process. We're all learning together. Um, I just want to build something where we stay together, right. And we're cohesive. And when you have a group like that move together, it's dangerous, man. Yeah. It's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's something that uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean, because like yeah. like you say, like if you want to move faster, move alone. But if you want to move further, move oh, yeah. together. Move so together. yeah, and I mean, you're, you guys are moving pretty fast as well. So and yeah. I won't even discount that part uh, of it because I mean, you know, like we were just talking about, you already started, you know, your team of how how many agents basically? Four. About four different, yeah, about four different yeah. agents, and you're what, just a month into the industry, not, yeah, not, not just the, yeah, not just the company, the industry of real estate. And you've already right. have a team that you're, you're leading and, and helping, which is, you know, I applaud you for that really respect what you've been, been able to do. So, uh, kind of shift. And I just, you know, I don't really see the, for me anyway, I think that it's easier for agents, right. That are coming into the industry to be able to use new construction one, to learn from, right? Two, you're building your transactions as you go along. You're focusing on one side of it because you're only focused on the buyer agent side because the seller is your inventory, right? You have that inventory. It is now yours. You can present this inventory, right? So it's not like I have to go to the, to the builder and the builder was like, well, show me your presentation. 
And that doesn't exist over there. It's like, hey, we have all these inventory. We need you real estate agents help us come sell it. Um, so some of the things that we have been doing, like we're going to the new construction site. Like I said, I, I do aerial photography. So we we do like drone video footage and interior photos. And we're like creating the marketing material. And then we're going to go take that information. And then we're going to try to find buyers, right? Um, you can work with different construction companies, new builds, um, or you can try to be exclusive with one and try to hit all the communities they have in your state. So that's kind of what we did um, in the beginning. And now I'm actually using the same builder to be able to reach out to the, my other agents in their state, right? So I already have a relationship with them here in Delaware. Now it's taken um, basically an individual, let's say Arizona, right? And say, you're going to connect with my agent here. So it's, it's helping, you know, helping the process along the way for my new agent. And she'd be like, okay, I know exactly what Ray is doing down in Delaware. You're going to be doing the same thing. Like, let's go ahead and plug you in. So you have a brand new agent, right? Able to walk into a million dollar home and go in there and, you know, you have all this social media stuff, right? They're able to stream, they're able to show these properties, they're able to take their own footage and put it on their website. I mean, on their website or put it on their website or put it on social right. media, but they have immediate inventory to move. Um, going into new construction, and also, you know, about new construction, not to plug in new construction, give them a plug right <laughs> now on this on this thing, um, but they also have a lot of time better rates like we just today we just hit a, a rate hike what is 7.35 i think that just happened today right so they're like the person that i'm dealing with now is at 4.99 wow so you know because they have their own in-house lending so it's sometimes it's a benefit to go to do construction as well yeah so Talk to your man if you want to talk about some new construction, <laughs> right? Yeah, got a lot of it in sure. here in Delaware. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's a really good point because it it's not a niche that a lot of new agents, you, you know, not 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 a lot of new agents go after it because they don't think they have the ability and they don't think they have the experience and all of that. It's just like it's it, it's stuff that they set up in their own minds, right? It's not real, yeah. right? Like you're you're doing it right now. You're teaching the people on your team to do it. So if right. you're a new agent listening to this, you know, go out there, uh, you know, well reach out to Ray and then he'll show you how to do new construction, you know, as a brand new agent stepping in and showing people with a real estate license, how to build a legitimate business versus yeah. being the self-employed individual who's working for tips. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. You know, we definitely are creating different um, streams of income, right? We already know we have multiple streams with EXP just with their model itself. But when you look at the service side and things that we're trying to do outside this, the seller buyer agent there's i mean I, i'm looking at my board right now so it's like what yeah. five different streams of income just from the service yeah. side right so oh yeah there's definitely you just can't go in um into this and i know if you don't you don't know what you don't know um but try to start asking the questions like how are people making money when they're not selling homes and right. i i'm seeing it now like i'm actually learning from people on, on the EXP platform, just going to the workplace. And I see all these postings of people selling different things. I'm like, man, that's smart. So for me every day, and even people, the people on my team every day, all we think about are things outside the box because the normal traditional things are in front of us all day, right? The yeah. normal traditional buyer seller agent um, is in front of us all day um, and learning like about new construction right now it's kind of outside of the norm. Like you don't see that all plastered anywhere, right? It's, it's not the, the normal, the normal thing. Right. Um, and we're just starting to dig into that a little more. Now we're looking at like land, like finding land for our builders, like bringing the builders to the actual land um, and having aerial photography and drone footage of going out and taking footage of the land. So we're having these beautiful drone footage of these beautiful homes, 
we're talking about the land now and being able to go and look at the land and be able to sell that land. So there's just a lot, a lot of things that we're, we're working on. And because we're working together, like I said before, as one unit, um, and I'm not an individual, I don't want to be an individual. And I think I told you this, like everything that I'm doing, just like looking at it from an ecosystem standpoint and sharing, like we're all eating from one plate. If I fail, Kobe, at doing it this way, instead of me just being a shark in the water or me being one of the two people sitting on a call that I made $1.2 million in sales and nobody in my downline made money, if I fell at sharing my plate, I don't deserve to be in this industry. It wasn't for me. Yeah, and I, I've t- I know I told you that. I know I told yeah. a couple people that, but that's that's my that's what I'm doing going forward. And I'm not going to change that. So yeah, that's I think that's a great mindset and mentality to have. And I know we've kind of talked about this uh, behind the scenes as well, uh, because you know coming from an attitude of service, coming from an attitude of a mindset of how can I help people, that's how the really successful people obtain their success. It's not about how many people I can screw over so I can make this quick paycheck is how many people can I actually help? And then putting the the material and the monetary benefits on the side or, you know, in the back of your head. And then just understanding that if you help enough people succeed and uh, you'll, you're going to get, you know, more than you ever wanted, right? That quote by uh, Zig Ziglar, if you, if you help uh, as many people as you possibly can get what they want, then you will have more than you ever want um, essentially. Mm. So, that's, that's something that I think, you know, I know you mentioned that, you know, if you fail, uh, I don't think you will because you're coming from the right mindset. And if you have that good fundamental, uh, fundamental kind of mentality, then, um, you know, anything that you do will, will be on the right track. And that's, that's where you can talk like for another hour about like intention and everything like different things like that. But, right. um, I would, yeah, I would I mean, say since I yeah. like started, um, this process, I would say a lot of doors have opened for me. Yeah. Um, and only thing that I that I keep doing is just saying, hey, how can I help you, right? And he, you're right, like it's it's been coming back to me in different blessings in different ways. Um, and that's again why I just said, I'm just gonna continue to go down this road. I'm gonna see where it takes me um, and I'm not gonna change. Like, I just hope that I, that I am that guy in the room in 30 days, I made $1.2 million. And, you know, I have these people on my downline that, you know, if they have this struggle and things in life that they're going through, like I can do something about that. Right. A lot of value. Uh, you shared a lot of value here today uh, in this interview. I think a lot of new agents are really inspired by, uh, could be really inspired by what you do. So uh, if you are a listener uh, and you're brand new and then you have somebody in your circle or somebody that you know who wants to get into the real estate industry, who wants to get into business, who wants to be an entrepreneur, share this interview with them, share this episode, this podcast, everything we talk about is, you know, kind of over encompassing. We don't really talk too much about straight up, you know, the sale or how to be the best sales agent. We'll give you strategies about that. But um, if you, if you did get some value out of it, please share it with somebody. That's the, the quote unquote payment is you sharing it with somebody else in your circle who can, who you think can also benefit from it. Um, <coughs> excuse me, but uh, for you, Ray, uh, I know I want to give you the opportunity here to share with our audience uh, some of the things that you're doing and how they can actually take part in it and how they can actually be a part of your ecosystem. Because I think a lot of people, um, after listening to you and getting to know you a little bit better, want to be, you know, want to be on your team, want to work with you, want to be your business partner as well. So I want you to, I want you to give the opportunity here to uh, kind of share that with people and see how they can actually uh, be a part of your team. We're really focusing on new agents in general and being able to, you know, bring people in where they feel like they have a home and have a place. And because of the ecosystem, like we're designing something where people are not left out. So it's not good. How about, how about Kobe? Take us away. Kobe, take us away. If you guys are, are interested in what Ray's doing, uh, definitely check out his, uh, his Facebook group, uh, Realtor Network, Ar- Realtor Network Army. It's incredible what he's uh, been able to do in a very short period of time. So you guys definitely don't want to miss out on that if you guys are getting your license or in the process of doing that. And then also make sure to check out his Discord group as well. So if you join his Facebook group, um, you'll also get access to that uh, as well. The link to the Discord, uh, he has even more information inside that Discord group on hours and hours upon uh, upon hours of training 
and additional resources for you to get your real estate license, get started as an entrepreneur, and then also get started in the real estate industry as well. Tons of resources. You can't even, you know, you can't even imagine how much is in there, especially for somebody starting out as well. And if you guys want to work with Ray, uh, I'm going to leave his personal, uh, personal calendar link below. So you guys can, uh, you guys can book a direct call with him and uh, be able to speak with him one-on-one -on -one, uh, and get to know him a little bit even, even more than we have here today and uh, get the opportunity to actually work with him and be on his team as well and get even more resources than uh, just the free stuff he's offering in his different communities as well. So we're going to leave all of that information in the show notes or the description below. Uh, make sure you guys are checking the show notes. There's a lot of resources down there and uh, that we're always sharing after every episode. But uh, other than that, Ray, uh, thank you so much for uh, for doing this podcast and uh, being here today. You've shared a lot of valuable information for us, and I can't thank you enough. And I am super grateful to uh, be your business partner and uh, see you uh, grow your team and your community and your ecosystem of real estate as well. And uh, for listeners listening in and tuning in today, thank you so much for doing it. Make sure to share it with somebody in your network that you think can benefit from it. Make sure to leave a five-star review uh, or a five-star rating on Spotify or a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. But other than that, thank you again, Ray, for tuning in. You want to leave say, one more thing with the audience? Yeah, yeah. just one the yeah. last thing. I get this question a lot, and they always say, what do you charge? It's free. I don't yeah. charge anything for any of this, all right? Yeah. It's free. All right, yeah. I forgot to mention that. Everything that Ray offers, completely free. So free. Uh, it's at no cost to you guys. So make sure to check it out at, and, uh, you know, reach out to Ray as well. But Ray, thank you again for, uh, for sharing all of this with everybody here uh, today. Thank you, uh, listeners, thank you for, uh, for tuning in and I'll see you guys on the next show. Take care guys. All right, guys. See you later. Yeah.